Hey, what's up everybody? Michael Montero coming to you from the garage. Well, what will soon be my garage. I'm still converting it. As you see, I still gotta finish some of the walls. Anyway, I'm getting my, uh, my little boxing set up here in my garage. I'm gonna have a speed bag over here. Uh, I'm gonna have a couple of heavy bags and everything. So still getting all that put together. But uh, a few of you guys asked about this, uh, putting together a quick video with some tips for shadow boxing. Because uh, for a lot of you guys, for a lot of people out there, shadow boxing is a really awkward thing and people get insecure about it because a lot of you guys that go to the gym and you go right to uh, the heavy bag or whatever it is you work mitts speed bag whatever you're used to hitting something when you, when you put that punch out there you're used to feeling contact and then you want to get in there and start to shadow box and you're like man this is weird I'm, I'm just punching at nothing i'm not hitting anything it's a strange sensation and then when you've got people watching you, if you're in a crowded gym or whatever, people get insecure. So the thing is, you have to slow it down and you have to realize what shadow boxing is. Shadow boxing is supposed to be a warm up. Now, it can be a workout. You could do it as a workout, but that's a little more advanced. For most of you guys, shadow boxing is going to be a warm up before you get over to the bags. And I would always recommend getting in about 10 minutes or so of jump rope warming yourself up, and then doing four or five rounds of shadow boxing before you do your bag work, before you do your mitt work, whatever it's going to be that day at the gym. But you have to remember that shadow boxing is more of a warm-up, okay? And I should preface by saying, obviously, I'm no expert. I'm a weekend warrior, but I've been around a lot of experts. I've talked to a lot of pro fighters, obviously, and I've picked up a few things, and I'm going to teach you guys or, or just show you a uh, trick, a little tip that's helped me out, and I think it can help you guys out too. So the first thing you should do when you shadow box, okay, is you should be in front of a mirror. If you don't have a mirror, let's say you're at home, if you don't have a mirror that you can get in front of, get in front of a window, because a window, you know, is a reflective surface. You can see yourself. It's better if you can see yourself while you shadow box. If you don't have a window, maybe get in front of a doorway. Uh, if you don't have a doorway or anything like that, I, I mean a door with like glass on it. If you don't have anything like that, just stand in front of a wall. But what I want you to do, regardless if you're in front of a mirror, a window, if, you're, if you have a window that has bars on it, that's great, or a doorway that has bars on it, that's great. What I want you to do though, regardless, is I want you to use tape, okay? This is painter's tape that you get at Home Depot for like here, let me make sure I get it in there. This is like, I don't know, three dollars or something, okay? It could be blue, it could be whatever color, but I want you to get some painter's tape and I want you to make uh, a plus sign, a big plus sign, and I don't know, maybe 10 inches across, 10 inches down, and I want you to put it right at the height of your chin, okay? So uh, have a line, a horizontal line going across where your chin is at that height, and then I want a vertical line cutting your face in half. So do that with the tape, and again, if you have a window that you can get in front of and there's bars on the window, you don't need the tape. If you have a doorway, it's the same thing. But for those of you who don't have that, whether it's a mirror or just a blank wall, take that tape and do a plus sign. And then when you get in position to shadow box, okay, you're going to get in position to where you might have to move forward, backward, whatever it is. You're going to get in position to where that plus sign is uh, right where the two lines meet should be right at your chin. Okay, so that is going to be your target. And we're going to use it as a target, not just for our punches, but for our head movement. Okay, and we're going to baby step this. We're going to go step by step. So our first round, and I, let me pick these up. I got little two pound weights here. Let me show you this. Little two pound weights. All right, nothing, nothing crazy. Just two pounds. I don't care if it looks silly, because you'll see some guys, they'll see Rocky where he's like, ah, ah, you know, with 25 pound dumbbells, and that looks cool. You only need two pounds, all right? If you want, you can get a set of these where it's one pound, two pound, and three pound sets. And maybe you get that. But if you think about it, most of you guys, you're probably using 16 ounce gloves on the, ba on the bag, and uh, that's a pound. So double it up, use two pounds. And what we're going to do, I'm going to walk you guys through just a few rounds of what I do. And um, this is just really basics, okay? We're going to, I want to make sure that uh, you can see my feet. But of course, we're going to get in a boxing stance, right? And 
Uh, for some people, their front foot is really straight, and for some people it's turned in slightly. I turn mine in slightly. I like it slightly turned in so I can pivot off it a little easier. Some people like it very, very straight. But this foot should definitely be out a little bit, okay? So you should be about right here. You don't want to have your feet way too far apart. You don't want to have them too close together. About shoulder width apart, maybe a little more than shoulder width apart. And you want your elbows in. What we're going to do with this first round is we're going to simply punch. We're going to walk through. We're just going to do six punches right now. And we're going to walk through it. Baby step. Now, I shouldn't even say walk. We're going to crawl through it. And we're not concerned about punching fast or punching uh, with a bunch of um, power and screaming and looking all cool and doing all this crazy stuff. You see that on social media. You see it on the, the network videos that, you know, uh, promoting a fight or whatever. I understand what that is. For us, what we're doing here is we're using this as a warm up and we're trying to get our brain and our bodies to talk and we're checking in with ourselves. We're kind of going through a series of checks if our fundamentals are sound. And we're making sure that we're doing everything we're supposed to do while we can do it real slow and deliberate before we get over to the bag, before we get over to the, to the double end bag, heavy bag, uh, before we work mitts with our coach, before we spar, whatever it is, okay? So the first round, it's nothing more than three minutes of, okay, are my hands up? Hands up isn't this. You know, you see a lot of pictures with uh, boxers and stuff and they do this. This isn't hands up. If you do this in sparring, you're going to get hurt. Hands up really could be here. But for the purposes of this video, we're going to put our hands about here. We're going to put them right about our cheeks, okay? My thumb is kind of touching my cheekbone here. So that's what I want. I want hands up. I want our elbows in right? And we're checking in with everything. We're making sure, okay, do I have my balance? I don't want my head way over past my feet or way behind them. Can I rock a little bit back and forth, put my weight, shift my weight from the back foot to the front foot, and I still have balance? Are my elbows in tight? Are they hitting my ribs? Do I feel my arm on my ribs? You should feel your titties smashing a little bit, okay? Your, your uh, pecs should be smashing them a little bit. Okay, but you should have your elbows in. Now let's just throw a jab. And we're gonna do it very slow. We're gonna pump out that jab and we're gonna come make sure that we're throwing it straight. We're bringing it back straight. You see a lot of people throw it out and they bring it back like this. Or they throw it out, they bring their elbow back like this, right? They wing it. We wanna make sure we're flicking it out and coming back. Flicking it out, coming back. We're moving our weight a little bit. We're pushing off this back foot and coming forward just slightly as we pump it out. We're making sure that we're turning over. A lot of people throw a jab just out like this. Now, we want to turn it over. In fact, we want to over exaggerate it. We want to turn that punch over and we want to aim for that plus sign. We want this middle knuckle to hit that plus sign. Now, I, you know, right now I'm just looking at a phone with a tiny little hole so I don't really have a plus sign to target. So my punches might be a little bit off. But for you guys at home, if you have that big plus sign that you're standing in front of, again, you want to aim right for that, right for that plus sign. You want to go very, very slow and make sure all these little checks with your jab that you're hitting it. Am I, point, am I punching straight? Am I turning over? Am I pulling back straight? Am I making sure that my elbow stays in tight? Am I keeping my right hand in place? Am I keeping my chin tucked? All that. Am I pushing off the back foot slightly and rotating my weight toward the front foot when I jab? You don't want to just lean back and do this. You want to have some movement, right? That's it. Throw 20 of these. Then we're going to move to the two. Now with the two, some things are similar, some things are different. So now we're keeping our left hand up, keeping our left elbow in. We're punching straight with the right hand. We're making sure that we're turning over, but we're pivoting this back foot. Pivot, come back. Pivot, come back. I have a slippery floor a little bit here, so I might have to readjust my feet every now and then, right? Pivot, come back. Pivot, come back. Also, another thing with the right hand, when you're standing in your boxing stance, this is obviously I'm orthodox. If you're, uh, if you're a southpaw, you're gonna flip all this, but your left shoulder, is past your right shoulder, right? Your left shoulder is in front of your left shoulder. When you throw the, the right hand, your right shoulder 
should come past your left shoulder. So your shoulder blade should switch. Part of that, when that happens, what helps that happen seamlessly is when you pivot that back foot. That's what allows you to pump that right hand out and then pull it back. If you don't pivot that foot, it's very awkward to extend this right hand. But if you pivot that foot, it's very, very easy. You'll find it very, very easy to extend that right shoulder well past your left shoulder. You should feel a stretch between your shoulder blades. Some of you guys are real flexible, you might not feel it. But some of you that are a little more muscular and a little tighter back there, you'll feel a stretch between your shoulder blades as you throw that right hand and really, really extend it. And again, guys, I don't care if you throw this slow. And I don't care if when you get here, you stretch a little bit extra just to feel, just to exaggerate that stretch. Now, also I should state, I'm punching down right now because the, the phone that I'm talking into, the tripod is only five feet tall. So it might look a little awkward the way I'm punching. I have to punch down at this phone right now. Normally, obviously, my plus sign in the mirror would be at chin level for me. I'd be punching up at chin level. The cool thing about this tip with the plus sign is if you're preparing for a specific fighter that's a few inches shorter than you, you can lower that plus sign. If they're taller than you, you can move it up. So you can warm up practicing for a specific target if you're preparing for a certain fighter. So anyway, we've done about a dozen or maybe 20 jabs, right? We've followed up with just as many right hands. We're keeping our elbows in. We're turning over on the shots. We're throwing them straight. We're pivoting on the right hand. Now we're going to add a hook. With this hook, remember that horizontal line? We're going to ride that horizontal line with the hook. So the difference here, we're pivoting with the left foot. Pivot. 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 When you bring back the left hook, don't bring it back like this with your elbow out. Cut it. Pull it back tight. Cut it. Pull it back with your elbows in, right? Boom, 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 boom. I'm obviously going too fast. I mean, for this, for, for this video, again, we're really taking our time to walk through it. And I'm going on the horizontal line of that plus sign. So we've, our, we've done our one, our two, our three. Now we're going to throw a five. We're going to throw a right uppercut. For this video, this is the combo that we're going to work on. So we've thrown our three, so we've worked on that. Now on the right uppercut, we're again going to pivot this rear foot. Boom. We're going to come up. As we do this, we're going to shift our weight a little bit. We're going to rotate that shoulder forward a little bit. We want to make sure that we're not punching like this. We want to make sure we're turning the opposite way on the uppercut. Cut it up. Cut it up. Do about 20 of those. Then we're going to throw the left uppercut. Now we're not going to pivot on this. There's really no, you don't have to pivot on this, you're, but you're still going to shift your weight just ever so slightly, right? Get that left uppercut out there. Throw about 20 of those. Now we're going to follow up with a four. This is a, a right cross. You could do it after the hook, but I like to throw this punch at the end of a combination because it's the money punch. So the straight right is here. The looping right's here. I'm exaggerating it for the purposes of this video. You wouldn't throw it exactly like this in real life, obviously. But you're still going to pivot a little bit on this right foot. And you're going to come down. You're going to loop it. It's an overhand right. An overhand right. And we're still aiming for that plus sign. But we're getting our head off the line. And I'm exaggerating it for this video. But those are the six punches. And you're going to throw about 20 each. That's your first round. That's all you're doing. You're going very, very slow. And you're taking your time to check in to make sure you've got all of your checks for each one of those punches. Are my elbows where they need to be? Are my shoulders where they need to be? My chin? Um, am I turning over? Am I throwing it straight? Am I looping it if I'm supposed to? Am I on the line? Am I pivoting? Is my weight 
balance and all that where it needs to be. If you can't get that down in the first round and you don't feel quite comfortable yet, do another round of that, the second round, where you're, you're taking your time with each punch. Maybe there's one punch you just quite didn't get right. Ah, I, didn't, I didn't like my left hook. In that second round, start working the left hook again. Okay, get it to where you feel comfortable that you're hitting all your checks. If there's a checklist, you're checking everything off on the checklist. So then in the second round, if, if you feel good, you're just simply going to work those in combination. Now we're not gonna throw it fast, we're gonna take our time. But we're gonna make sure we got our stance, we feel good where we're at, we got our balance. And we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, and back up. And we're gonna work this over and over and over. And you might, halfway through, you might, let's say after the three, you're like, man, I'm, I'm really winging my elbows on these uppercuts. Damn it, okay, let me get that shit tight again. To where you're checking in with yourself, right? Boom, boom, boom. Am I keeping my elbows tight? Am I keeping my balance? Am I pivoting the right way? Is everything where it needs to be? Because it's not about punching fast. It's not about being flashy. It's not even about right now moving your feet all around. You know this, I ain't doing no footwork right now. It's just getting the punches down. So we did a punch at a time in the first round. Now in the second round, we're just putting it together. We're exaggerating some of these punches, of course. You would never on a hook go way over here. But for the purposes of shadow boxing, I want to exaggerate it. I want to really get that uppercut up here. I want to overdo it a little bit so that I can pull it back when I go over here to the bag. So then that's what you're going to do in the second round. And it's the same thing where if you're not feeling comfortable about the way you're linking those punches together, right? Jab, right, hook, uppercut, uppercut, overhand. If you, if you don't feel good about that, you work it again. You do another round of it. If you feel good, okay, let's put some head movement in. And this is where we're gonna use that plus sign a lot. And this is, I think, the biggest tip for a lot of you guys. Because another thing, when dudes shadow box, a lot of you guys just think punches and you're just standing there throwing shots, right? You're just throwing your punches. You're not thinking about moving your head. So what we're gonna do for this round is we're just gonna move our head, but we're gonna use that plus sign. So with that vertical line, that represents ones and twos coming at us. We're gonna use that as a slip line. So if, we're, if a jab's coming this way, slip to the right. A right hand's coming, slip to the left. So with that vertical line that's cutting your face in half, slip, 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 slip. We're just slipping, we're avoiding shots by slipping. Get yourself used to moving off that line. Slip, slip, right? And this is one where you could do different combinations, you know, slip right, right, left, right. I mean, you could just, you could keep it moving. You can also, if you start to feel comfortable, you could slip as you step, moving forward. But we're not gonna get into that. You could do it moving backwards too, right? We're not gonna get into all that right now. We're just gonna work it with that plus sign. We're also gonna dip under that horizontal line. So that line that's right at your chin. So we got our hands up, we're slipping a jab, we're dipping under the right hand, right? Or maybe we're slipping the right hand, we're dipping under the left hook. If there's a right hand coming at us, if there's, a, I'm sorry, a jab coming at us, we're slipping this way. If they follow with an overhand right, we're dipping under. If they throw a, a right hand, we're slipping. If a right hand's coming this way, a straight right, we're slipping it. If they follow up with the left hook, we're dipping under it. So you could really use that plus sign to do, and then also you could just dip straight down. You could just bob straight down. So slip, slip, bob, bob, slip, slip, dip, slip, bob, whatever term you want to use right? You could start doing these in combinations and you could start feeling that rhythm and how this would flow into those punches we were working on before. Because all this, 
leads to punches. And that's what we're going to do in the fourth round. So in that third round, you're staying stable. You're not moving around and pivoting and doing all this. You're staying stable, but you're working on that head movement, slight head movement. And here's the thing too. The reason why I like the plus sign is because I see a lot of guys over-exaggerating a slip. If someone's throwing a jab, jab's coming at you this way, you don't need to do this. All you need to do is that. Boom. Boom. Sometimes the most effective slip is you want a guy to miss your chin, obviously, but maybe the side of his glove slides off your head. If you got your hands up and you slip and you've got your core tight and your balance, trust me, when the, the, the side of their glove hits the side of your head, their shit's gonna go, their shit's gonna move, not you. You're solid. You're a whole whatever you weigh. I'm 220 pounds. If I'm here and I'm nice and tight and I slip a jab and he slides off my hand or my head a little bit, I want that. Because now he's a little, he's not just missing. He's hitting me and sliding off my head a little bit. He's even more off balance. And if I can get him to just miss and I'm still in range, all I gotta do is turn over. In fact, if I got a really high guard and I slip, I just gotta tap the dude. It doesn't take a lot. You see, you see guys loading up on the heavy bag. Oh, oh, oh. Dude, all you gotta do is touch somebody. If, if you just make them miss to where it's a glancing shot and they're sliding off a little bit, pow, that's all I gotta do. From right here, throw it straight from my shoulder, turn over on it. Pow, just touch you. It's going to affect you way more. You're going to be off balance. And if I touch you and pivot out and just get off that line, that's all I need to do to change that little moment of that round. You know what I'm saying? So with that plus sign, just, just practice, just slipping, just slipping to the side, just getting to the side of that line of that piece of tape and then add a dip with it. Slip, dip. Slip, dip, slip, slip, dip, slip, slip, dip, dip, right? That's what we're doing in that third round. We're getting comfortable and we're starting to build patterns in our head to where it's not just an occasional slip. We're slipping and then dipping. We're slipping and then dipping, right? You're dipping this way, dipping that way. The reason why I want you guys to work this in combination is because this is what's going to, in the following round, what we're going to add punches to all the punches we were just working on. So what we could do is we could start off nice and slow where instead of just throwing a jab like we were before, now we're throwing a jab and getting our head off the line. While we throw that jab, we're getting our head off the line. If that line's here, we're still aiming for where the two lines cross. That target ain't changing, but we're getting, we're getting our head off the line while we do it. So those two lines where they cross, so I'm not moving the target. I'm not moving my hand with me. I'm still punching the same place, but I'm getting my head off the line, right? And it's the same thing with the right, but let's, now we can do a one, two, where head off the line, head off the line. That's it, it's that subtle. If this is the line, head off the line, head off the line. That's it, boom, boom, and we can dip under. Boom, boom, dip under. Boom, boom, dip under. Boom, boom. It's just subtle. It's very, very subtle. It's moving our head just a little bit while we punch. We could, we could double the jab. And maybe on the first jab, you keep your head straight. Boom. But on the second one, you dip. Ba, ba. Right? Maybe you shoot a jab to the body. So that horizontal line, remember we talked about before, just straight dipping down? Add a jab to that shit. Right? You could do all sorts of combinations here. You can, um, I don't know, man. Slip, slip, dip, uppercut, right hand, dip. Slip, slip, uppercut, uppercut, right hand. You can start doing all that stuff. That's what you start incorporating into that fourth and fifth round. Do it slow. Do it really slow. I'm doing it way too fast right now. But slip, slip, bob, uppercut, uppercut, right hand, under, slip, under, uppercut, right hand, hook, 
uppercut, under, bob, bob, uppercut, uppercut, bob, right hand, under, jab, right, jab, right, jab, jab, right, faint the jab, right, that's another thing, you got a guy thinking that you're going to jab first, so you're going to stab down to the body, well then we can throw a feint, maybe I'm going to faint like I'm stabbing to the body, come up top, right, with our right head, right hand off the line, remember the, uh, the overhand right that we were doing back in the first round, well, I jab to the body, overhand right, back, maybe I faint the jab and just crouch, keeping this left hand in position in case he shoots a right, I can, I can pick that off, but maybe I faint like I'm going down to the body, come up with an overhand right, all sorts of different things we could do, right? Jab, faint the right hand, left hook. So, boom, pa, boom, right? All sorts of different things we could do. But you baby step it and you build on it. Start with the hands, making sure everything's tight. Add the head movement, put it together. You see now, I'm just sitting here screwing around with you guys. I didn't even do full rounds. I got some sweat going right now. I feel it on my nose and on my face. Now I can take this and work it over on that bag. I can take it and work it over on this bag. And all that muscle memory I just built into my brain of keeping the elbows in, you know, pivoting, pivoting, and then working the head movement in with it. When I get under this way, I'm open for a right hand. If I dip under this way, I'm open for an uppercut. If I dip under this way, I could do a, a hook over the top. After that hook, I throw a right hand, dip under, uppercut. There's a million things you could do and you could practice all that, but you start by baby stepping it. Punches, head movement, then start putting it together. Then you take it over here and you start moving your feet. One, two, dip. One, two, two. Underneath, boom. Underneath, boom, right? One, two, step out, pivot. Then you can start adding your footwork into it. But it all starts with that shadow boxing. So let me know what you guys think about the plus system. I don't know what else to call it, but keeping that target in mind, that plus, that gives you that target to dip under, to move your head. That's the most important thing when you're in the pocket because a lot of times you can't get away. You might be on the ropes. You can't necessarily use your feet to get away you might be in with an opponent that's faster than you, his feet are faster than you. So what you gotta do in that, in that situation is shell up and just pick shots off. You know, you parry jabs, pick shots off, but while you're doing that, move your head and get yourself in position to counter, right? So a lot of that is just using that plus sign, remembering all that, then you add your footwork to it. All right guys, let me know if you wanna see more videos like this.